Mm. I would like to know about you, like uh, what is your education qualification mm -hmm. and uh, do you have any, what is the requirement? Uh, of course, uh, the SQL knowledge is prerequisite mm. because here we are all working all around data and databases. Mm. That's why SQL knowledge is mandatory. Mm. And as part of our course, you are going to learn about, uh, just let me know if something you don't require or let me know if anything more you are expecting. Okay, sure. Okay, one is uh, data warehousing mm -hmm. concept. Mm -hmm. So simply to understand uh, what is data warehouse, uh, what is the source, what is the target, and what is ODS, what is staging area, uh, mm -hmm. something knowing about uh, metadata and uh, data marts and data warehousing architecture, characteristics of the data warehouse and approach of the data warehousing. These things we discuss as part of data warehousing concepts. Mm -hmm. Then here we have data modeling. So generally in, uh, in your experience uh, you might work with entity relational modeling. Of course this is very similar to that but here data modeling is a multi-dimensional modeling. Mm -hmm. So that simply we call as dimensional modeling. Okay. Because entity relational modeling is not a viable technique for data warehouses. Mm -hmm. The first point you remember, in entity relational modeling, we'll normalize the data, right? Yeah. Once it is normalized, the redundancy is eliminated. So those databases does not uh, accept redundancy. Mm. And uh, one minute, Shahina. I'm making you organizer, Shahina. Mm. So that you can session. You can record session from your side. In the GoToMeeting, you will find a start recording button. Did you find it? Yeah. Okay. It is started at least. Example? Yeah. You click on start recording button, right? Uh, yeah, it is started. Automatically the video will be saved into your my documents folder. Okay. Yeah. So here the data warehouse accepts the redundancy. By this time, you may know that data warehouse stores historical data. Mm. So if you want to store and manage historical data, you should have the same record uh, existence, multiple times occurrence of the same record with small differences. Mm. So here, it allows redundancy. So entity relational modeling is not a suitable technique for data warehouses. So it is uh, dimensional modeling we use here. Mm -hmm. In future, you might become as modeler in data warehousing if you know this concept. But as an ETL developer, even though you may not require to model the databases, but you must be able to understand the given structures, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For that, uh, we'll be discuss about dimensional modeling here, about star schema, snowflake schema, and various type of types of dimensions, various types of facts, and as well uh, the slowly changing dimension concepts and the OLAP concepts. Mm -hmm. These things basically will be discussed as part of theory. This everything is theory part. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is data warehousing concepts, I say, overall. Mm -hmm. This is totally theory part. It takes uh, four to five sessions. Mm -hmm. Then after, actually, we start uh, Informatica. Mm. So generally, we say Informatica 9.5, but mm -hmm. the, the tool is actually Informatica Power Center. Yeah, power center. Mm -hmm which is the ETL tool, right? 
we start working with uh, Informatica Power Center. Basically, one or two classes will understand about Informatica and the architecture of the Informatica flow of working, the process of working with Informatica, these things. Then we start working with uh, source definitions and target definitions, performing various transformations. So here, mostly we'll cover around uh, 20 transformations. Mm. For you, I can add one more, including Java transformation. Mm. Mm -hmm. Here, Java transformation is also there, but the people who don't know Java, uh, I'm not going to cover that. Okay. But you are good at Java, so you, you can understand uh, the class and constructor, destructor, these all things, uh, methods and these all things. Mm -hmm. So see, here, whatever tool it is, we have a limited number of components, predefined mm -hmm. components in the tool, but mm -hmm. our requirement might be something different, uh, the logic which we, we may not be built using the existing components. Okay. Transformation. At that time, this Java transformation and uh, stored procedure transformation, this kind of transformations works well, and we can build our own logic, data processing logic over there, right? Mm -hmm. The transformation uh, does nothing. Mm -hmm. The transformation just call the Java code, that's it. Oh, okay. Every logic you, you may write in Java, got it? Yeah. Just you call that um, uh, class in the uh, transformation, that's what you say. Yes, yes. Even not class, method. <laughs> oh, just a method? Okay. Yeah. But there are multiple methods that might be in the class, so whatever method you want, you can call. Oh, you call only. Okay. Yeah. But how do you link that and everything you will know? Where the Java class will be running? That is a Java transformation. That is a Java transformation available in Informatica. Okay. Got it. Just like all other 20 transformations, here yeah, Java transformation is also. Even in TIPCO, we have our methods, we can write it. Even though we have like TIPCO, all the stuff, I took TIPCO training also. So okay. it's not the same, you know, like that. Okay. Yeah. And how about XML? Like uh, XML transformation also, you show me in this demo, in one of XML the transformations? Source, XML source, how to extract the data yeah, source, from XML yeah. file, mm -hmm. and uh, how to load the data into XML. This both will mm -hmm. cover. Okay. Okay. XML also will use. Do you ever worked with Cobalt, Shahina? Well, yeah. Well, uh, the first job in Satyam was with Cobalt only. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you remember, if you remember the Cobalt. <laughs> <laughs> what the definitions or divisions or what are you talking about? Cobalt flat files. Cobalt flat files. Copy books. Uh, copy actually uh, the, in my UBS one they use a COBOL flat file and uh, to no no I think they use other way they use a XML file and then they map to co COBOL uh, like a um, file or something I have to see what exactly they are doing it yeah because here our requirement is uh, very simple and limited. Mm. If you are able to understand the COBOL flat file, the data in COBOL flat file, the hierarchical structure you have, mm. that's enough. Here we can work with the normalizer transformation more. So we can see how to do the extraction from the COBOL flat file also. But generally we never do loading into COBOL flat file. Oh, you know, the extraction from a COBOL flat file, got it. Yes, yes. So for that reason you use copybook, okay. Yeah. So generally this this COBOL flat file we generally doesn't touch in the sessions. Mm -hmm. Java transformation generally we doesn't touch, but XML will cover for everyone. Mm -hmm. The reason is the people don't know the COBOL flat file. What is this? Yeah, you are right. And even I open the flat file, COBOL file. It's not like our general flat file. It's yeah. a hierarchical structure. Yeah. So that's why the the current, yeah, because the current that. project what I'm working on is like a backend DB2. So we no. have no COBOL copy book and everything. I'm a Java person. I call DB2 stored procedures from Java. Okay, okay. But in as per Informatica tool concern, whether you deal with Oracle or whether you deal with SQL Server or DB2, Sybase, Informix, Teradata, whatever database you deal with, mechanism is the same. Okay, that's good. 
while development will be working dependent on ODVC drivers. Mm -hmm. For execution, we'll be create connection objects in Informatica. Okay, got it. So they will take care of. Uh, rest of the Informatica work is common. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mechanism is very simple. Actually, the virtual machine which I provide you for practice, you will have uh, Oracle database and SQL Server database and Teradata. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, the software is installed on Windows, not on Unix. No, we have on Unix. Tell me what uh, what I will do is whenever you say, uh, let me go to my office. Uh, I'll go on Friday to my office and it is installed on Unix for us. Whatever if you give me assignment, I'll do in my office. I, I'll be in to install it and you know. Yeah, but 95% as an ETL developer, our environment is uh, Windows environment only. Content is Windows only. Oh, front end is Windows uh, because uh, uh, I see one of my developer uh, like uh, we have a sub project. He uh, whenever he has posted Unix, he come back to me and ask me. So I saw his um, machine name and uh, Unix scripts and everything. I don't know is it related to Informatica or something else? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, uh, because uh, Informatica has two different types of components to install. Shakina. Mm -hmm. Server side components, second one is client tools. Okay, server side components, client tools. Okay. Yeah, all the Informatica server and server side components, server configuration, everything is done in, in Unix. Unix. Informatica server, I am sure more than 90% will be Unix, 100% I can say. But mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, depends on the company. Uh, I saw one location, uh, they have Windows uh, server for Informatica. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but 100% uh, they'll install Informatica on Unix server only. Mm -hmm. But your client tools are purely Windows based tools. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Highly GUI. Mm -hmm. Highly graphical user interface. Since mm -hmm. you know, you have uh, seen Java and GPE, uh, at end of the course, you might feel that is it this easy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. because everything is graphical user interface. Your client tools are GUI, but mm -hmm. Informatica is having facility in your ETL flow in the ETL workflow. At middle, uh, if you want, you can call an Unix shell script. Mm -hmm. And as well, we have a facility like uh, um, we can call the Informatica workflow and execute it from the Unix OS. Mm -hmm. So for the scheduling and to build some kind of external logics like uh, wrap-up scripts and uh, start-up scripts and uh, audit mm -hmm. scripts, mm -hmm. we might be using uh, shell scripting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, Unix anyhow you are good, there is no problem at all, but I will mm -hmm. show you how to call or how to invoke an Unix shell script, Unix command from Informatica, there is a command task we have. Mm -hmm. And I will also show you how to invoke, the, how to call the workflow and communicate with uh, Informatica server and execute uh, a Informatica ETL task from the Unix. Mm -hmm. There are utilities like uh, PMCMD utility and PMRE utility. Mm -hmm. Okay, that I will show you. Only that part actually you required. Mm -hmm. So whatever tasks, whatever jobs you developed in Informatica, that you can execute from Unix. Mm -hmm. The Unix shell script that you can execute from Informatica. These both are there, both facilities are there. Mm -hmm. That I will show you. When the situation comes, that experiments you can do in office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So totally this code means be very basic level to very advanced level. Uh, which is required, uh, skills you required in uh, working with real time. So scheduling, generally the Informatica scheduling, scheduling facility is there here, mm. but it may not that worthy to use in real time. Mm -hmm. 
that's why no one uses the Informatica scheduling tool. Okay, the Informatica scheduling tool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, means the Informatica is having a scheduler. No one uses that scheduler. Mm -hmm. Everyone uh, prefers to go with uh, scheduling tools like Control M. Mm -hmm. uh, Third-party scheduling tools are there. Okay. Yeah, so those kind of uh, third-party scheduling tools they'll be using. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that third-party scheduling tools uh, we may not covering in this, uh, but if you want, I can give you the material. Even it is available in net also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, apart from that, uh, sometimes they may use contacts, Unix contacts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's only for scheduling purpose. Mm -hmm. So, as an ETL developer, right from the scratch to advance what all uh, we're supposed to do, mm -hmm. that everything uh, will be covering in the course. Mm -hmm. And as I told you, you have uh, knowledge about uh, COBOL flat file and uh, Java. Yeah, yeah. These two transformations I will tell you in addition. Okay? Yeah. And uh, so already you know Unix, this is the skill set. One is prerequisite and one is the added skill. Mm -hmm. Unix is added skill set. Mm -hmm. These things are required. So our course curriculum concentrates on this. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So today you just uh, understand what is data warehouse and uh, what is the purpose of this data warehouse? Mm. You know, Shahina, in uh, Java or PHP or .NET, excuse me, just give me a second. Mm. Hello. Yes, sorry. Yeah. So here, basically, Java programs and .NET programs or PHP. Otherwise, you can consider any ERP CRM also. These applications are majorly meant for day-to-day -day business transactions, right? These all what I say operational systems are transactional processing systems. Mm -hmm. Understand? 
So here in data warehousing and uh, database management systems, we use the technology like OLTP and OLTP. You might have listened this. OLTP stands for Online Transactional Processing. Mm -hmm. OLAP stands for Online Analytical Processing. Mm -hmm. So all these business applications might be developed using Java or .NET, whatever it is. Uh, I do see them under OLTP. Those are business applications. Those are intended to perform day-to-day -day business transactions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Example, ATM system, any card processing systems, mm -hmm. or debit card or credit card processing systems, any healthcare domain related projects, mm -hmm. e-commerce projects, mm -hmm. even SAP implementation. SAP is having various modules like finance, HR, etc., right? Yeah. So each module is to perform day-to-day -day operations of the business, mm -hmm. even CRM these all things. So here these all things I say business applications those comes under OLTP. Okay. Okay. So you know every business application maintains its backend, its database. Mm -hmm. Generally we call it as database. But what kind of data we do store in the database? Transactional data, right? Okay. The database stores the detailed data of every transaction. Mm -hmm. So let you consider an enterprise which is spread across the world with several branches. So round the clock across the globe, Several people are working with the system, right? Transactional mm -hmm. processing system, the business application. So keep on, it is generating large volumes of data into the database. But still, uh, the database contains transactional data, detailed transactional data, and uh, it contains only current data. Mm -hmm. And these databases are uh, insert optimized, I can say. Mm -hmm. So here you have to confirm this. In your experience, whatever projects you involved, once you understand the live process, while performing the business transactions, number of insert operations are more than uh, other uh, SQL operations, right? Yeah. So whenever a transaction, there are two things for and when, there are two things. One is for the you know if you are I'm I'm basically in a mortgage application, right? Whenever uh, someone enters the mortgage, then it's entered. And also we have some reporting um, where we do lot of retrieval for financial advisors, the reporting one also. So there yeah, yeah. one is insert and one is retrieval also. Is but retrieval goes to totally reporting side. Yes, you're right. So more number of queries we have to execute for reporting. Yes. But in purely transactional processing systems, only transactional reports will generate. Insert, 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 yeah. insert, insert. Of the insert operations will perform. That's why these databases are known as insert optimized databases. Okay. Insert optimized. That's the reason these databases are designed using entity relational modeling mechanism. They are normalized, right? Yeah. When the database is normalized, they are to eliminate redundancy, we split the larger tables into multiple small tables. Mm -hmm. So here, number of tables are more, you understand? Okay. Yeah. In OLTP systems, the number of tables are more. Mm -hmm. And moreover, the situation is like this in environment, uh, and like this, uh, we do have more number of databases. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, a simple scenario to understand, 
suppose we started our business suppose 15 years before or 20 years before mm. when the business is started generally no one go for advanced technologies right yeah maybe started processing the things by using uh, excel excel files mm -hmm. after that when the requirement comes and uh, when their uh, investment capability is there so everything works fine they will upgrade to the another technology whatever is best for them yeah okay yeah. so let you understand like this we started our business around 95 98 uh, initially we worked with excel sheets Mm. So for that period, data is in Excel. Mm. After that, they moved to uh, something like DBS3 Plus or Fox mm. Pro. For example, they moved to Fox Pro. Mm -hmm. After that, they started using MS Access. Mm. After that, they might uh, migrated to the something like uh, Visual Basic and SQL. Our database. Okay. Okay. After that, they moved to Java. Mm. Java means they might be using Oracle database. Yeah. Somehow they are not feel comfortable with Oracle. They moved to DB2. Mm. So after that, apart from this operational system, uh, they also working with CRM and ERP. Mm -hmm. Right. So something like uh, they are working with something like PeopleSoft CRM. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, SAP ERP. Mm. So now the currently the systems currently in use. What are these systems currently in use? Mm. So one is the Java project with DB2. Mm. Is currently in use for the mm. transaction. For the CRM purpose, they are using PeopleSoft. For the enterprise management purpose, they are using SAP. Mm -hmm. So these are the systems currently in use, but the remaining all databases are older ones, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. we have past data. Okay. So here, uh, one is uh, Excel files and one is uh, uh, Fox Pro database. One is access database like this, multiple heterogeneous databases we have Shaheen, right? Mm, yeah. Of course, you can understand in another scenario also as per your experience, maybe some branches are working with uh, something like uh, SQL Server database, some other branches are migrated to Oracle. That thing also possible in real time, right? Mm, yeah. So here in an environment, our data, our total data is not in single database. Got it? Yes, you are right. You know what is the problem? If we keep every data in single database, the database size will be increased. Let you take any relational database management system, so it uh, response will be very bad. Yes. It may not respond properly, yeah, performance and everything. Some to some point of time it may stop responding too. Yeah. So that's what uh, we doesn't keep unwanted data in a live database. So we keep only current data which is useful for performing uh, transactions. Only current data we store. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now the other end of the business is the role of the business managers. Generally business operators are there. The business operators access the business application and with the help of business application and operating its features, they perform the business transactions. The transactional data store in its corresponding database. That is what OLTP system, the transactional processing systems. Okay. The another end of the business is the business managers. Okay. So business managers are very less in the company comparatively the business operators, right? Yeah. If you have 10,000 operators, 10,000 clerical grade people working, how many managers you'll have? Only in tens or hundreds, right? 
Yeah. At various levels, top level management and mid level management and low level management. So here very few managers are working anyhow. But what is the responsibility of a manager? To monitor the team. Decision making, right? Decision making and monitoring, both. Yeah. So manager sh should be monitor yeah. and understand, decision analyze and, and yeah. take appropriate decisions. In today's competitive business world, uh, timely taking decisions, uh, responding to the, the timely changing market conditions is very important. Yeah. So here I do consider the major responsibility of the manager is decision making. Mm -hmm. If you want to take decision, you should have an uh, accurate knowledge, right? Yes. So if you want to gain the knowledge, you have to analyze the data. Mm. You have to analyze the information. Understand? So it depends on the need. The manager might be expecting a report simply. OK? Mm. Of course, each manager may expect different, different reports. But basically, what manager is required is a report with the information what he required that is easy to analyze. Yeah. In set, the presentation of the report in such a way, it should be easy to analyze, easy to understand. So something like if I give the 10 years data in the tabular format or something like a, a pure table format, uh, it might be difficult to analyze, right? Yeah. So if I add some color codes like uh, this is low sales, wherever low sales is there, I'll give red color, wherever is the average source is there, I'll give green color, wherever, uh, uh, sorry, yellow color, and wherever sales is very good, I will give green color, wherever sales is really ultimate, I will give dark green color. Such color codes if you follow, that is easy to follow, right? Yeah. And even you have the pie charts and the bar charts and uh, other kind of uh, graphical uh, reporting mechanisms. Mm. So basically, it depends on his need, uh, as he expected, the report must be given to the manager. Mm. From where the report can be generated. To generate the report, we, have, we should have the data from these databases, right? Yeah. For example, I am a sales manager, I am asking a report like uh, product-wise, branch-wise, monthly sales amount, okay, since uh, 10 years. Mm. I want quantity and amount, product-wise, branch-wise, quantity and sales amount mm. for every month since 10 years. Mm. So if you see the available uh, database systems, uh, so 10 years data is not located at one location, right? Mm. It is located in multiple heterogeneous databases. The multiple databases, mm. they are not same. They are different, different databases, varieties of databases. Mm. Is there any possibility of querying data from this type of heterogeneous databases together? No. It's not possible really, right? Of yeah. course, we have possibility for uh, connecting multiple Oracle databases using DBLIMS. Mm -hmm. Even we can establish a bridge uh, between Oracle and SQL Server also. Mm -hmm. But here I have several other databases. Even I have Excel files. I have Fox Pro. I may have Sybase. But establishing a common bridge across them is, uh, there is no such mechanism. It's not possible, one thing. Mm. And another problem is, let us consider uh, the multiple heterogeneous databases are, couple of Oracle databases are there, couple of SQL Server databases are there. There is a possibility of establishing a bridge, a connectivity between these all, and there is a possibility of writing a common query to retrieve data from these multiple databases together. Mm -hmm. But still, what's about the performance of the query? It's too bad, right? Yeah. 
and uh, moreover here the report the information we want to present in the report is not a direct uh, transactional data mm -hmm. it is analytical data even you understand uh, the branch wise product wise uh, monthly sales amount uh, means the data must be pulled from multiple databases so more number of joins are required yeah. And we have to integrate the data and uh, consolidate the data. Means aggregate values must be present in the report. So we have to use group functions and group by classes. Mm -hmm. Even though everything is in single database, using more number of joins and more number of group functions and group by classes in the query makes your query complex. Yeah. So a complex query processing takes time of the database engine. It's a time consuming and resource consuming. So performance may not be good. Mm -hmm. If it is the case if everything is available in single database, but still if the data is in multiple databases, uh, executing a common query to pull the data from multiple databases, the performance of the query will be too bad and too worse. Mm. So it is not a right idea, right? Yeah, and even practically we can't ensure that all the databases might be Oracle or SQL server there might be other databases also which we cannot connect with mm. which we cannot uh, include in the common bridge right mm. so here the thing is uh, the basically we have to establish an another database system exclusively for this analysis processing that database actually we called as data warehouse okay means a separate database i am uh, creating here mm -hmm. The what is the purpose of creating separate database? What is the necessity of having one more database server? You understood. Yeah. And moreover, by establishing this separate server, we can separate the transaction workload from the analysis workload. Mm -hmm. So analysis process may not interrupt or may not damage the transactional operations, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why here we will have a separate database and we will write the queries mm. from this database and generate the reports. Mm. And here we can take advantage of the system that is once we are going for separate database, we can eliminate unwanted data. Unwanted data means the data which is not really necessary for analysis. Yeah. Of course, product details and customer details are required, but customer phone number and email ID is not required for the analysis, right? Yeah. So no one performs phone number wise analysis and email wise analysis mm -hmm. in, the, in the manager level analysis. So yeah. such kind of uh, unwanted information we are not going to take and we take only the information which is necessary for analysis. Mm -hmm. And moreover, we are not going to keep the straight away, we are not going to copy and put the transactional data in this newly created database. We are possibly consolidating the data and putting here. Okay. Means we are converting our transactional data into analytical form. Such analytical data, such informational data we do store in this database that is what data we have, right? Mm -hmm. So this is what data warehouse generally we call us, okay? Mm -hmm. So data warehouse is nothing but a relational database management system which is exclusively meant for the management decisions, mm -hmm. for the support of management decisions. So this mechanism, this much mechanism, what we call as OLAP, Online Analysis Processing. Mm -hmm. So if you understand, Shahina, there is a lot of difference between uh, transactional reports and analytical reports. Mm -hmm. Okay, BI reports. This OLAP system it's, is what we also say business intelligence system. Mm -hmm. This system is also called as decision supporting system. Mm -hmm. Whether you call it as OLAP, whether you call it it as BI, whether you call it as decision mm -hmm. supporting system, or all represents the same meaning. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
because the reports we required in the transactional processing is different, uh, the reports required for the managers for the support of his management decisions is different. Yes. So here we have several OLAP reporting tools, BI reporting tools in the market. Those are exclusively meant for uh, generating the reports for the management decisions. Of course, if you want, you can use it for the transactional reporting also. If really you feel it is necessary and it's worthy for you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But these rep these reporting tools are exclusively meant for BI reports. Mm -hmm. Okay. Example: Cognos BI is a BI reporting tool. Mm -hmm. MicroStrategy is an another uh, reporting tool. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. Uh, BIOS business objects is another reporting tool. Okay. Of course, now BIOS is included into SAP. It's become as an SAP product. Mm -hmm. It is used for SAP BI. Okay. And even you have OBIE, Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise. Like this, varieties of reporting tools are available in the market. Uh, the, the responsibility of the reporting tools are uh, querying the data warehouse and uh, re generating the reports for the managers. Mm -hmm. Okay? Of course, here you have uh, multi-dimensional metadata modeling, relational metadata modeling, means relational OLAP, multi-dimensional OLAP, like heterogeneous, I means hybrid OLAP. Mm -hmm. These things are there. Of course, this we will discuss detail later. Okay. But uh, if you want to generate the report, the data should be there in the data warehouse, right? Yeah. yeah. From where actually data comes to data warehouse? Different data warehouse. Of course, the data available in the OLTP systems, the transactional systems, available with us since uh, several years. Mm. A couple of them are live systems. Couple of them are backup systems, couple of them are older systems, whatever right. it is. Mm. Okay. So actually my, our business transactional data is available here. The data required in the data warehouse must be prepared from the wealth of the transactional data, right? Yeah. Not only transactional data, Shahina, for the managers, for the management decisions, some outside data, other data is also useful. Mm -hmm. Like what? For example, I want to maintain uh, currency values in uh, standard currency or different currencies. Uh, so I want to convert my currency values into a particular currency, right? Mm. Since so many years, I does not maintain the currency conversion rates. Uh, but as of today, whatever current conversion rate is there, I can't convert it, right? Yeah. So 10 years before data, if I converted as per the today's conversion rate, uh, See how foolishness it is. Okay. See. So you have to maintain the currency. Since, 10, since 15 years, what is your salary? How much you earned? Means can I calculate around uh, 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 how much, how many dollars you earned and into 63, 61? Yeah, I can't because you might have earned uh, the dollars at the rate of uh, 40 rupees 45 also. 45 or 50 also, yeah. Yeah, so that everything I can't make it 50, 61, right? Yeah. So I required the timely, uh, when the transaction was done, at that time what currency conversion rate is there, that mm -hmm. information you might require that you have to get from the foreign exchanges. Mm -hmm. Which is not your business data, which is others' business data, right? Yes. And some of the market analysis surveys and this kind of additional information you might require mm. for your analysis. Mm. And even some government information is required. Mm. Vijay Malia want to open his liquor business in a state where liquor is strictly prohibited. So mm. it's not feasible, right? Yeah. So he should note the information where the things, how the things and everything. So, apart from his transactional data, he requires some data from the government departments also. Mm -hmm. For example, I am a fairness cream manufacturing company, so I want to expand my business, so I want to enter into other, other beauty products, other uh, cosmetics. Mm -hmm. 
to manufacture. Mm. Mm. So should I know the industry trend, uh, what's going on, right? Yeah. So for that, uh, even I'm selling my product to my dealers, my retailers, but my retailers are not strictly for me. They might be dealing with other products also. They might be selling other products also. Yeah. So I may purchase the business data from my dealers and my retailers. Mm -hmm. So that is what I say, external data. Mm -hmm. That's what I say, external data. So till now what all are the OLTP systems I told you, that is internal business data. Mm, yeah. Okay, it's the business data, data of our business transactions. Mm. But now this blue color boxes, whatever I made, that is external data. Means I purchased it from somewhere else. Mm. Okay, others data, right? Yeah. And uh, we do make use of a staging area here. And we do extract data from multiple heterogeneous sources, internal sources and external sources, okay. both. Okay. But these are not homogeneous. These are heterogeneous. These are, there are multiple varieties of multiple systems and multiple varieties of systems. Mm -hmm. So we do perform extraction of the data, extracting data from multiple heterogeneous operational sources and external sources. This is what known as data extraction. Okay. And as I told you, just I don't want to just put all the data, copy of the data into data warehouse. First of all, I have to integrate this data, right? Yeah. And as well, I have to convert this data into analytical form. Mm -hmm. So here, at the staging area, we perform transformations, converting the transactional data into analytical data. Mm -hmm. Okay, analytical data is nothing but consolidated data. Okay. Which is useful and flexible for the analysis processing. Mm. Because once you store all the detailed data in data warehouse, again the same complexity reflects in OLTP, OLTP, yeah. OLTP right? Yeah. So possibly the data complexity will reduce and will make the data easy to query and uh, produce the report. Because quickly generating the report, fastly analyzing the data is really required. Mm. So that's why, so we are transforming the data into analytical, such data will be loaded into data warehouse, right? Mm. Understand? Yeah. So this process is what we say ETL process. Okay. This is the process we say ETL process, understand? Mm -hmm. ETL is nothing but extraction and transformation and loading. Okay. Very simple. Extraction, transformation, and loading. Mm. So we do extract the data from multiple databases. Of course, these data, these might be a database, this might be a file, this might be XML file. As we talk early, a COBOL file. Mm. The sources can be anything, right? Mm, yeah. So we do extract the data from multiple heterogeneous sources and transform the data and load the data. This is what ETL process. This ETL process is basically construct the data warehouse. So make sure the data available in the necessary data available in the data warehouse, right? Mm. Of course, there are uh, several uh, ETL tools available in the market. Example, Informatica Power Center is one of the powerful and uh, popular ETL tool and quite old ETL tool also. Mm -hmm. Old is gold. Yeah. I believe this because as I have experience in working with different uh, ETL tools like uh, Informatica Data Stage. Mm -hmm. I really feel Informatica is uh, good. Mm -hmm. The reason behind is uh, the Informatica is having less number of components and more scope of uh, building our logics. Mm -hmm. But data stage if you take more number of components will be there. Okay. Of course I can say that uh, for each and everything they give you a built-in component you need not to build your logic. Mm -hmm. Just how to use the component, if you know, it is highly enough. But there are so many components and uh, so many uh, 
pro attributes and uh, sequential processing scenario and parallel processing scenario as of that various options for each and every property is all things, right? Yeah. Shahina, just give me a second. understood what is ETL because here uh, data stage is having uh, several components and uh, sequential processing capability and parallel processing capability for sequential processing a different component for parallel processing a different component and mm -hmm. these all uh, so various attributes and these all things so I feel uh, remembering these many options are complex than uh, building our own logic yeah okay and also scope also will be reduced if you have a different requirement uh, the same kind of things you have to do right yeah so that's why informatica is uh, so much stable and uh, popular since so many years even lot mm -hmm. of tools are came which can compete really the informatica but uh, still it is uh, popular mm -hmm. the reason is its stability its consistency its scope of building our logics mm -hmm. The same components for all the things. Whatever mechanism you use, whatever process you run, the same component works for you. Mm -hmm. That is the advantage. So the ETL tool is a third party tool which is responsible to communicate with the source and extract the data and apply the several data processing logics known as transformations and load the data into data warehouse. Mm -hmm. Connect with the data warehouse and load the data into data warehouse. Work is very mm -hmm. simple, right? Yeah. And these all ETL tools are highly graphical user interface, mm -hmm. highly GUI. Okay. So you need not to hard code anything. Mm. Take the boxes, take mm. the links, connect them. Okay. Okay. So it is very easy to develop too. Mm. Okay. See, Shahina, you might be using Eclipse, right? What did you say? Eclipse, Eclipse, yeah, Java that, yeah. mm -hmm. Eclipse you are using, right? Yes. If I ask you what is the difference between Java and Eclipse, how can you answer? Or do you say what kind of question it is? No, Eclipse is an ID where you can uh, ah, give you what yeah, you Java is to write the right? Java program, right? Yeah. So if I say uh, learning Java, how complex it is, and learning Eclipse. <laughs> learning Eclipse uh, is like just you need to know how to open a project, create a project, and how to, you know, you uh, just need to be familiar with the tool. Yeah, interface and navigations, that's it. Yeah. Everything logics and everything you have to build using Java, right? Java. Yes. So how, how easy learning an Eclipse is, that easy working with the GUI based ETL tools and reporting tools also. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm comparing in point of view of uh, complexity. Oh, okay. Then. Learning difficulties. Mm -hmm. Because everything we can do with our simple navigations. Mm -hmm. Of course, as I told you earlier, whenever you require some scope is beyond this informatical components. Mm -hmm. If you want to build your own data processing logic, so you can use your Java, you can use PLSQL. Okay, this kind of things we can use. Okay, so this is what basically about what is OLTP and what is ETL and what is data warehouse and what is OLAP. Mm -hmm. 
even uh, somebody says that for Informatica, OBIE is good, for Informatica, Cognos is good, nothing like that. Mm. Okay. Because OLAP tool is entirely a different tool which query the data from data warehouse and produce the reports. But ETL tool is differently, definitely a different tool which um, makes, constructs your data warehouse, right? Mm. Yeah. So in this case, there is no direct dependency. So OLAP is not, OLAP tools are not directly dependent on the ETL tool. Mm -hmm. So here everything is working for data warehouse, right? Mm. So data warehouse could be anything. It could be Oracle, it could be DB2, it could be Teradata. It could oh, be SQL. That's not specific, okay. Yes. So that's why generally what happens is uh, if the project is done with the data stage, which is an IBM tool, generally they prefer IBM Cognos. Okay. Okay. So like that, it's a business related preferences, but not technical dependencies. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you got an idea about end-to-end uh, -end flow of this data warehouse environment, right, Shahina? Yeah, yes, I do. So do you have any questions from your side? No, um, I have like if I want to read some more in-depth material on this, I revise it. Like, uh, do you provide the material or do I you provide me the link where I should go and study and come back? Like, I just want to. Nothing like that. I will give you material timely. Mm -hmm. Okay, good and. Uh, 